Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Nathan Eastwood. I'm a painter, as you may know. Uh, this evening, it's, start, it's the, uh, the start of a series of a project that I have that's on the go, which is basically myself uh, making in conversation with other artists and hopefully curators. The intention is to develop hopefully an interesting conversation about contemporary art practice, contemporary painting, and hopefully get the artists to talk about their work in relationship to the wider context of art practice, etc. Now, this evening I'm with the artist, um, the artist Rob Reed. Um, he's been making shows, doing shows, making paintings for quite a while. He's got a lovely dialogue going on. And I thought it would be a lovely way of starting a series of interviews with artists and conversations. Now, let's cut to the chase. I would like to introduce you to the artist, Rob Reed. Please. Hello. Hi, thank you for allowing me into your space and for hopefully the audience to get a chance to okay. um, hear about your work. Okay. Uh, please do sit down. Yeah, well, more space. <laughs> I have some questions that um, I've written, as you know, a uh, chance for you to have a look at. Well, anyway, it's nice to be here. It's lovely to be able to look at your work. Yeah, in the office. Yes. <laughs> okay. Can I ask, start, really? Um, please forgive me, I am reading off a sheet, but I just know I will go on to on a tangent if I don't. Okay, let me start. Well, how did you get into making art and why? Um, how did I get into it? Um, I'd say, personally, uh, my whole journey into where I am now has more or less come at a very, uh, uh, not late stage, but the, the awareness to, to actually consider something and go, you know what, I'll, I'll go, you know, go on with this, go, let's go further and explore, uh, you know, what I can do with this. So more or less uh, that last minute when you're finishing your A-levels and you're sort of considering university life. Mm. Uh, heck, the, the, that decision alone to say, do I want to do uh, further education was so last minute because I, I imagine what I was doing at the time in terms of art, mm. at, you know, sort of GCSE level and, uh, and, a, and then A-level was pretty much uh, like a sort of an enjoyment and a pastime. I mean, we all do it. We, you know, we sort of dabble to begin with, and uh, then uh, through small uh, steps of uh, active encouragement, a bit from your family, a bit from your friends, you then start to realise, oh, actually, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing alright with this. Uh, so um, it was through gradual steps of naturally finding my own personality, my own language, something that I could identify with. And of course, it it could have been anything. It could have been. Uh, uh, you know, music, uh, mm. writing, writing, or heck, if you want to do anything else. Uh, I mean, I had a brother who played music, mm. so that was his identity. So immediately, there was some sort of creative influence, but it wasn't necessarily my voice that was coming through. So through that sort of quite individual process of uh, drawing at home in the bedroom, mm. and then eventually in the classrooms, you know, I felt a bit more confident about myself. Because um, school for me was pretty much uh, let's get through it. Um, it wasn't a horrible school, it's a good school, yeah. um, but it was one of those things that I preferred to do at lunchtime, being in the, uh, the classroom, even when it wasn't a class. Mm. Um, you know, I mean, obviously I played football and I had my lunch, but if there was an opportunity to draw, um, then I'd, I'd do it. But uh, in terms of embracing where we are now as you know, sort of practitioners, mm. even that came late. Again, we're, we're talking at a point where I was at university, uh, uh, and I think it came to me around about the third year. I mean, obviously, I went into university with the interest and mm. passion that, you know, as I mentioned from A level, that I, you know, mm. I, I like this, I feel comfortable around this. Uh, but then, you know, the first and second year, you sort of play and experiment, and you, you meet your peers, mm. and you, know, you go through that enjoyment as much as uh, the education. But in the third and final year, you know, when you knuckle up and you do your dissertation, that's when you realise, you know, there's a, you know, where there was confidence before, 
and the ability. Now there's a, a true voice and a direct passion. Like I'm clear that this is what I want to do as a vocation. Uh, and that was more or less in the last se semester, mm -hmm. I guess. So after submitting that dissertation, uh, I realised, yeah, this is what I want to do, continue forward. And, and that's been more or less 10 years ago since okay. I graduated. When did you graduate with your undergrad then? So my undergraduate, um, pleased to say, was at uh, UCA mm -hmm. in Farnham. Oh, and that was well, in 2009. Okay, so 10 years. And so then you just recently done your MA. Yeah, um, so uh, that was last year. Mm. Um, so where we are now is uh, my place of work, mm. uh, University of East London. And I was uh, blessed really to be in the department I am uh, in the art and design technical support. And uh, also to have um, supporting staff members in my own department uh, called senior management. Mm. And uh, my boss at the time uh, sort of championed the idea that you know you should, you should do this you know you know how, how long ago was it when you did your BA you know and you, so I figured um, I'll do this you know whilst working here because obviously I've been here for about six years now yeah so there's enough enough time yeah. uh, and, and I feel like I was at a sensible age and, and maturity wise in terms of the work because I wasn't you know like most people do when they do their BA they go straight into the masters and there's some level where they're still a little bit unsure yeah. and still playing around. Yeah. And to be honest, I never really wanted to do a master's. Uh, it was something that I, I said to myself after doing the bachelor's. Uh, I dare say some others do as well. Yeah, I do. You kind of want to go out and prove yourself yeah. rather than sort of clasp onto more education to sort of feed, you know. It, I mean, obviously you can get it from the classroom, but I feel like most of your narrative ideas should come from yourself. So that's what I was doing for the past 10 years ago. And you were um, setting up shows as well in between, the gap between exactly. BA and MA. So you were not just making work, but also organising shows. Because mm. I remember being in one of those shows. Yeah, I was in one, yeah. yeah. Um, well, that, that's all part of the building, really, in terms of uh, what I say, like by going out there and, and achieving it yourself without the need of a, an MA to my own name. Obviously, I'm not knocking it because I eventually did one, but. Things like what we did in shows and other shows uh, recently, and small things that you submit your work to, they, uh, you know, you learn from those experiences. You know, as much as a, a scar and a, you know, and a badge of honour, it's something that you, you wear along the way. And uh, and I don't think I could have done in done the MA without those really, because that's where my uh, you know dialogue that these you know that I'm presenting in this office has come about. You know, that I, I feel strongly confident with and I truly identify and equally share with uh, like-minded painters like yourself. You know. How did your family feel? Did they give you a lot of support? Your relatives, your mum and dad and your, um, brothers, they, your brothers as well? Yeah, um, I mean, I came from a very loving, supportive family. Um, there's nothing to knock there. Definitely my parents, because obviously, uh, you know, they've backed me uh, all the way since. Mm. Admittedly at the start, you know, I'm not going to say that there wasn't they didn't know what I was doing, but like all parents, they want to make sure that you're, you know, you're level-headed, you, you know what you want to do. Yeah, of course. And I guess they they were sort of clicking the same way I was when they realised that uh, this is something I identified with, uh, I was comfortable doing, and uh, and you know, I'm not saying you need talent to do what we do, but you know, they they recognised something in it, but mainly yeah. my own abilities to do this by myself. It's always the way, isn't it? You yeah. Know, your parents also, oh. Very good, come on, show us that. But no, no, no work's ever made the fridge because uh, I wasn't even drawing at that age. So, as a, you know, as a kid, um, there weren't, wasn't any art per se, uh, it was all. Um, when did you think to yourself, I have something here and I really want to pursue this? Was, was, as you say, you said you did your really late, yeah. But so did you not notice anything prior to that? No, it, it was more of a pastime. It was, it was, I, I think it was connecting with the. Uh, you know, the independence and the, the quietness of it all, that, you know, it's, it can be a solitary thing. Um, but I like the idea that you're, it's just you and that medium, you know, there's no other interference from anyone else. You know, you don't, uh, you don't get, I mean, depends where you are, but I, 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 I prefer not to get disturbed whilst I was, you know, creating something. Um, not to brag, it was, uh, you know, no shared credit in such a thing it's just you and the paper or the canvas but uh yeah it came very late 
So in a way, that sense of collaborating doesn't really happen as such because you're on your own in solitary painting. Mm. Is this why you have made some shows to have that sense of um, of collaborating with others? Definitely, yeah. Um, I mean, it, I, I'd highly recommend everyone to, you know, whatever point in your career, be it you know leaving college uh, or even in a professional uh, career where you're, you know, you're known. It, collaboration is always key because it supports your work. But um, so that's what I was engaging with. It was the um, a chance to, you know, because obviously you, you make hard work, but you know, instead of just being stuck in your studios all the time, you need to meet, you know, like-minded people, do what we're doing now, you discuss ideas. Yeah. Uh, but those particular shows, um, they were sort of personal pet projects that, um, you know, as we all do, you want to create your own opportunities. But this in particular was um, an opportunity to create for myself to uh, meet and exhibit alongside people's works that I truly admired and figured you know that they they were really standing for what I was also standing for and so that's I interesting wanted to put myself in there you've just in a way moving slightly into a question I was actually going to ask next and that being uh, and I think you've already started to answer the question but I'm going to say it and maybe it's a way of pinpointing something here for time when did you decide to make art practice an occupation? So in other words, when did you think to yourself, I mean, you've just been mentioning going to art school, you mm. realise at your A-levels, etc. But was there a moment where you thought, this is an occupation now? Um, well, honestly, it's, it's still not an occupation for me. Um, I'm very much, um, yeah, I, mean, I, I mean, I've got a full-time job. Yes, uh, as I mentioned, <laughs> uh, I, I'm at the University of East London currently. Mm. Um, that's where I did the masters last year. I've always uh, maintained a job, like yeah. a uh, you know, uh, on the side to uh, you know, obviously subsidise and fund my way around uh, life as we all need to. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the painting practice is mm -hmm. always travelling alongside it. Um, admittedly, yeah, I mean, there's always been flights of fancy when you think, oh, I want to do this as a, an occupation. You know, and everyone asks, like, oh, would you like to do this full time? Of course, we yeah we'd love to um, if someone's happy to finance. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean that's that's now, why yeah finance now. No, you just buy just buy a painting or a badge or <laughs> anything, a postcard. But um, yeah. but in general, I, I I I'm supporting myself by having a job. But it even though I mean you would think that would sort of conflict my sort of uh, uh, my time management in terms of spending it with painting. But honestly, I've made it sort of work. At the, at, currently, I've made, I'm making it work. Mm. Admittedly, I much prefer a studio than to be based in an office. But um, well, I mean, mean, we're doing this. Well. Yeah, works well. Works well. Yeah, I mean, we're we're having this conversation. I mean, what is a studio space? I mean, a space is where you, a studio is just where you're able to produce an artwork, mm. be it painting, sculpture, video, editing a video. It's a space in which you're able to concretize your ideas. Yeah. So um, for me, this is that space. Well, it's working at the moment is uh, I mean we're having this conversation now after work hours you saw me earlier uh, yeah. with my regular uh, duties but uh, being where I am now after five you know working uh, in this space uh, naturally right next to you know my desktop and everything um, I prefer having that sort of step away from my work life into my painting practice because it it, it's that sort of mentality you needed in, in a way, if it makes sense, to to get back to the paintings I make, which we'll, we'll discuss. But ultimately, I prefer to be here till gone 10, 10, 30, whenever they kick me out, than being sat, sat in traffic driving all the way home. Because this, this, that driving home is not fun. So, and, and this is time much better spent. Have you ever been locked in? Uh, I've had uh, you know people banging on the doors, going, "Wait, what are you still doing here?" <laughs> yeah, but not not enough to uh, stay overnight. Um, obviously, in the past, where I've had other studios, um, uh, to mention Lewisham Art House, one of them, and uh, which you organised the show there, didn't you? So yeah, so that's where um, I was uh, well supported by that community to host shows. I mean, that's one of the benefits of being at those studios, mm -hmm. um, and they've always had a string of great. Uh, exhibitions in there uh, when, I, when I was lucky to have a studio like all, all the members there and obviously 
anyone from outside the world, they welcome proposals and I happen to be uh, lucky enough to do two. Uh, my brief stay, I mean, I did three and a half, four years maybe there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so in a way, so you're, you finish at the end of the day from working in your, um, your normal, you know, your straightforward job working for the, uh, the college. And then you're able to sort of move over in the space and get on with your painting practice. Mm. Are you able to use the computer system in order to make applications for shows and uh, yeah. you know, tr sort of yeah. oscillate between the two? Uh, I mean, straightforward. I mean, you can see the distance that I have to travel to. It's not that bad. <laughs> that's foot. Um, but yeah, it does, it does help, obviously. I mean, that's a benefit of having a, a workstation here. Um, but uh, admittedly, um, um, I'll have Sometimes when I'm here on the weekends, uh, you know, like I say, I prefer, I prefer to spend my time here, but sometimes on these monitors, uh, sometimes twice, depending on the, the season, I'll have the football on or the radio on, um, just to add that in the background. So uh, again, uh, but obviously, yes, coming back to the making applications, that, it, that is a, a useful resource to have immediately, otherwise. You must spend a lot of hours in this place then. Fortunately, I do, I spend, uh, and um, you know an unreasonable amount of time in in here, but again, if if this is if this is your language, making paintings and uh, you know where else would you spend it? I mean, that's why I say I don't want to be sat home, uh, sat in a car, racing to get home. What to what sit in front of the TV? Like I say, I might as well stay here till ten thirty, not two. You're maximizing your time much more efficient mm. because if you did have to have a go to a studio that was somewhere else yeah. and you're going to be as you say in a way spending a lot of time in the car getting there and able to move from here to there you're maximizing your time efficiently yeah and i've been been in that as well in that situation where i've had to get trains across town heck even at one point there was a period of my life when i was working at the uh the norlington road studios in leightonstone uh another set of uh decent studios for what is available in london these days uh, so I was making the distances on the train at one point from Bethel Green across town on the central line, so that's easy enough. But then at another point it was from Arminster via Barking and then uh, Leightonstone High Road. Okay. So there's been many studios in the past, I've, I've never had a permanent... It's, yeah. It really does feel um, like you're at ease with yourself, like there's a feel, uh, a, a feel that... Uh, you're able to feel comfortable, you feel happy, you feel, you know, there's no sense of stress as such. You feel at ease and you can produce the work. You can see in the work that I'm looking at here that there's a feeling of, you know, it feels right. It doesn't feel like there's no tension. Like there feels just right, like you've, you've got something working here. It comes across in a way like a, it comes through the work. Does that make any sense in any way? No, no, so uh, like as mentioned, uh, I, I guess I use it to channel that uh, sort of emotion to remove myself from work. So mm -hmm. by, you know, tapping into this, I'm, I'm free to, uh, you know, unwind. But you obviously there's a sort of a, a solitary reflection in, in doing something like this. Mm -hmm. I, I guess that goes for many uh, practitioners. Um, heck, you know, I mean, that's you know, one of the joys of why we do uh, such a thing. Do you, even though you're open, you're open to the public in a way of people that work also in the college, mm. do they feel obliged in any way to say, hey, well, have you thought about looking at this? Have you thought about doing that? Like, you, oh. you're always getting critiques every day. Um, or does that not happen? No, no, I've, I've had my fair share. Um, people obviously are first greet you by, um, oh, wait, this is going on. <laughs> but, um, uh, you, know, you know, explain to them my reasons and why. Uh, and get behind it and support. Um, I mean, I'm not doing anything terrible. Um, and, mo and honestly, if this wasn't here, you know, they might not have me as an employee. But you know, I, I turn up more for this than than that. <laughs> but uh, no, in terms of critique, uh, you know, people go, uh, you know, oh, I see you're you've made this sort of image. Um, that reminds me of this, or uh, oh, has that got that influence in there somewhere? Because Across the board here, in terms of technicians and the academic staff, we're all um, from that background. We're all, yeah. you know, making our own work. Uh, you know, so the, the program leaders are, uh, you know, professional artists. Obviously, they're now, you know, part-time lecturing and full-time lecturing. And even the uh, technicians, they themselves are, uh, you know, 
constantly showing around London, even abroad. So we're all in the same mix. And, and I do likewise when I go to their office. Obviously, if uh, one particular colleague, if he's doing performing arts, like a performance piece uh, in his office, then it's a little bit different to give feedback on because he's, he's zoning in. Actually, um, yeah, that leads me nicely on to our next question. Um, which artist, painter, do you think is making relevant work today? You could say it's not. Well, uh, take your pick. There's many uh, at the moment um, because I, I'd say, I mean, we all grew up with this, especially if you go through college, you, you grow with that uh, stigma that, you know, the whole life of painting, you know, who's doing it anymore what, and why should we, you know, the whole painting is dead. Paint. Um, but no, I feel like there's a, a whole uh, field of uh, painters these days that I've, you know, obviously we go through the textbook names, um, you know, the contemporaries that are showing in, in the big name galleries, but um, but uh, on a mass, um, I've discovered more uh, on a local level that, uh, that I appreciate far better. Um, and I guess that's one of the benefits of those shows I put together, because those painters, um, I can easily hand on heart say those were the people I truly admired mm -hmm. uh, in terms of you know there's moments where you look at their work and go oh, fuck sake they've done that when <laughs> I wanted to do that uh, but that's great that's what you want you want to see that same passion and that same sort of voice obviously it's a bit of a kicker when you see someone else do something similar but that that's just the, our business but it, it's can't also it. yeah you can't knock it but it also um, you don't live in a vacuum, do you? No, we don't live in a vacuum, but it equally a amplifies what that what we're doing is is a, is a, a, I guess a unit. It's it's something to be uh, you know reckoned with. It's uh, people need to be exposed to this a bit more. Um, so there's there's a. Uh, Do you any particular people you could kind of put in com in term? I mean, well, I mean, go ahead, Victor. Well, or yeah. everyone else that you say, you know. Yeah, they really are challenging what painting or the perception of art and painting can be today. Um, oh, uh, in terms of challenging what we're doing today, um, I to be honest, I I can't recite off any the top of my head. Um, mainly because most of uh, the shows and museums uh, and, and galleries I've been to. Uh, what shows have you been to that's been quite poignant? I mean, you've just got back from a, almost like a tour of Europe, looking at contemporary, um, well, historical art and contemporary practice. Are you? Do you find yourself uh, more drawn to those who once lived, who made obviously poignant works at the time, that have that resonate with you, such as Van Gogh? I know you've just been to the Van Gogh Museum. Yeah. Or was in the Rembrandt? Um, was it the museum yeah, or was it old? Yeah. So obviously there are contemporaries, but is there something more? within the historical context that you can say, yeah, do you know, they really did engage on a level that really within painting, that you think, yeah, I um, need some of that, I need to think about that. It's, it's difficult to say, because I, I don't think I'm, you know, at that, that sort of part to to pass that comment. Uh, but then obviously I, I equally admire what some folks are doing. Uh, but um, I'm more drawn to, you know, my past masters because they, 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 I'm just drawn to the narrative that they worked and also the circumstances. I mean, a lot of us are very fortunate these days to get materials at, on hand and delivered to your front door. <laughs> so that's another reason why I'm drawn to that side. But the uh, you know, contemporaries these days, like I say, um, it, I, the ones I truly uh, really admire, I'll be uh, writing up an email or penning down an idea for a show wanting to invite for those, so that's interesting. just bring it back, you know, you're one of them. Uh, uh, well, Narvi Price was in one of your group shows. Yeah, last year, uh, it was Hannah a group Brown. of us. Um, yeah. 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 yeah, so they're, again, colleagues who, over time, uh, I mean, yourself included, and the ones in uh, that show uh, that you were involved in, and also last year's one, and other pretty existing shows that I've actively gone out of my way in. Uh, these people's works, they haven't just been like, oh, I've just, I've just seen that. Yeah, they'll do. I'll put them in. No, these are people you follow. Yeah, yeah. and uh, not just follow online in that sense, but I make a point to truly support and see what they're about. And yeah. nine times out of ten, which, uh, and it's a blessing. They're they're my people. Like not just that they're making, you know, 
like mind and painting, but no, they, they talk my language, I like the music. They're your pleasant. context as an artist or your contemporary, would you say more context? You know, as in, when I look at your work, I can see you would I'd be you would be able to identify with, an, uh, say, a bigger show with someone like Hannah Brown. So would you say it's looking to see where you place yourself within the wider context? Or, um, I get, again, it's something, uh, in the wider context, um, that's for others to give or take, you know, where I sit. But um, I'm, I'm equally uh, thankful that I was able to get, uh, you know, painters like Hannah to say yes to, to my response. I was really nervous. I really didn't know. I didn't think, you know, that I'd get the response. And it was a delight uh, with her, Marguerite, yourself mm. in that first show mm. to get all of you together. Because um, like I say, these are people's works that where I was equally submitting works into sort of, I don't know, whatever competitions. Uh, and you spot their works and you jot their name and go, all right, I keep seeing you. And you go, where are, you, where are, you, you know, where are they going to be next? And you see it and go along. Um, it, it takes a while. I mean, for me personally, it takes me a while to sort of approach someone because mm. I don't, you know, don't know how they're going to react. But they might be, uh, they might feel pestered. But thankfully, everyone that I've met and uh, personally invited uh, and hope to going forward, they've all, they've all been an absolute uh, joy. Um, and that's, you know, what I prefer. But um, outside there, the bigger picture, uh, who's to say that's for others to sort of judge where I sit. But actually, in a way, I mean, I'm just coming on to the next question, which again, you're, you're sort of. <laughs> moving into a radical new art kind of world. Um, I was going to ask this question, but I may actually alter it slightly. Yeah. yeah uh, okay, this is a little bit of a, of a long question, so please, guys, bear with me. Uh, is there a work of art you would like to have in your home next to your own work? What artist inspires you? For me, for me, is Gerhard Richter, Gustav Courbet, uh, Samuel Luke Fields, for me, is a few examples. What about yourself and why? But uh, already we were moving into this, which mm. you just identified, you just mentioned some artists and contemporaries. But actually, let's stay around this little area and think about well, who would you have your work sitting next to if you could, historically? Van Gogh, maybe? Um, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Goes without saying, everyone would like to get their hands on a Van Gogh, a oh, Van Gogh. and uh, you know, obviously they have it to themselves. But uh, if I if I money no it was no object, and uh, the world was my picking, easily like to get a um, Camille Pizarro easily. Okay. Um, just always been drawn to uh, obviously the impressionist, you know, as my standard textbook sort of education was growing up. But uh, when I was noticing out of that group. Uh, was more in, in his work, uh, the things that he identified in the sort of everyday. And then obviously the others were doing something similar, but um, a lot of them, I mean, nowadays could be sort of considered chocolate box or whatever, or picturesque. But we've all done it. We've all, we've all done a picture that, for the sake of, uh, why? Because it's aesthetically pleasing, I'll just do it. But I mean, nine times out of ten in his work, I've, I've, it resonated for me. And uh, I guess it's, it's when you really dive into those particular works, and this goes for many past masters, uh, you know, you mentioned Van Gogh being one of them, but in his particular work, uh, like Pizarro's, I just really just like going up close and having all those brush strokes and colours within colours that make a, it could just be a, um, a casting shadow, you know, from the branches of a tree, and you see all these different hues, these purples and blues, that make up like a one band of colour, but on closer inspection, you know, they've revealed all those uh, other colours. Well, admittedly, in his later years, he, he goes towards pointillism. That I, I don't really, I mean, that's okay, but I'm more interested in what he was doing, you know, to sort of modernise the whole uh, Impressionist movement. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, that, I guess whenever I can, I, I try my hardest to instill some of that sort of uh, uh, painterly gestures in uh, my own works. Mm -hmm. So. Sorry, just to meant just to tap into it, um, the natural environment, environment. Sorry, uh, the elements. I mean, I, I do that more so. You work from photographs as well, don't you? Yeah, I do. And is the the way that you're 
the emphasis on the brush mark within your work is mm -hmm. that it, with the intention of negating the photographic source you know you wouldn't you wouldn't want to be called a photorealist in any way so it's a case of is it the source material in order to attain information to paint yeah is that what it comes down to really just that um yeah strictly a um a image resource to work mm -hmm. from um obviously most of the works uh on, on site are you know taken a, a, as a photo i'm not one to be in the middle of the field or in most of my work, I'm, you know, stuck in the middle of the street. You know, like, you know, I couldn't do that. But be painting on site because you'd be disturbed, or uh, you know, heckled, or it could be rainy or wet and windy. So no, I'm not an on plan air. But um, in general, the the, the, the that, that printout uh, just serves as a record to um, to work from. Um, I mean, I don't work religiously strictly from the picture. Uh, so there will be elements now and again that I edit out. Uh, I know some painters who do it purposely to, to create certain moods, but I, I only do it now and again through, uh, I guess, whatever it seems appealing at the time. I, I, it's not an active uh, choice to purposely edit out things. But in general, um, you know, choosing to do paintings, because you could easily argue, uh, argue, why don't you just use a photo, you know, just display that. You, you really found these environments to convey, just present the photo. But I'd say uh, the response to that is, because it, it just looks too flat and it's a very instant record. And, you know, there's no, I feel like when, when I'm in this, you know, working from the, uh, the print out, I, I get to dwell on the image more and uh, through the act of, you know, painting, I get to sort of, you know, um, meditate over that emotion a bit longer obviously a lot of that comes from the first hand experience to begin with so most of my works uh, I don't actively go out and find those environments because that would be impossible uh, most of what I do if I want to say it's my source material is actually being in the environment walking mm. and uh, just you know naturally trying to find uh, and organically like these uh, routes and passages of which to, you know, temporarily remove itself, or even, you know, travel in between one environment to another. It's that kind of nomadic, sort of, uh, sort of wandering that uh, I tap into, and that can only be done by the act of doing. Okay. It just so happens to be that we have a smartphone nowadays. Yeah, it's true. Click it. Um, but yeah, um, whilst whilst I have the picture, um, I'm, I'm I'm being a bit more considered. Uh, so that's where I feel painting has, uh, has its strength, more so over the use of a photographic print. Yeah, right. Um, Actually, let me ask, um, some of this stuff that we are talking about, noir, elaborate noir, be good that we do come back to some of this, actually. Mm -hmm. um, um, obviously, with the questions I do have, I want to present, with, present you these questions. But even post with some of these questions, we will come back on some of this, because I think it's it's useful to talk further about, to allow the audience to learn even more about your process. Mm. But before we get to that stage, um, I will ask you, how do you start a work? Mm -hmm. And do you have any rituals or simply a routine like going to work? It's funny you mentioned about your working process here on your daily, you know, to earn your bread and butter. Mm. So yeah, with that in question, obviously we could touch back on, I know in a way you're going back on yourself slightly, but That's fine. hopefully yeah. we can elaborate further still. How, uh, again, I'll ask you, how do you start a work, as in a painting? Do you have any rituals? Obviously we, you're talking about the photographic source material here, but you did also speak about, you know, you, you don't necessarily think, oh, they're gonna paint this. But anyway, the question is, as I say, how, how do you start a work, yeah. etc. Um, uh, well, that's my distance to, be, to begin with. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's not too terrible at the moment, but th there'll be points in my life where I have to do uh, uh, further distances. Um, who knows? Um, rituals, non, none really. I mean, I, I guess just the, the, uh, you know, by being in your studio, we all know that experience that even if you, I mean, obviously you don't want to waste a full day, but you know, even if you spend a few 
minutes or even an hour or so just by being present in that space that's so much beneficial so that kind of can be a ritual I'm not saying you need to meditate or anything but you know you could just be sitting there having a coffee on your phone reading a book or whatever you know but I think the presence is needed obviously this it, it, it doesn't apply to me because I'm in my office so you often go out photographing? Uh, what, during the work or...? Well, I mean... I can do, now and again, if I go off-site, uh, down the road, wherever. Um, but in general, whilst I'm here, that's pretty much the basis. Um, I will say it's quite an essential thing for... for you know, it's, it doesn't influence painting, per se, but it's, it's essential for me getting on and really zoning in in what I do, uh, listening to music. Mm. So I'm always, I mean, my headphones are on. I, I could do, do this quiet, I'd just be too, too silent. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm always uh, watching, uh, listening to my music. And as I mentioned, I've, now and again, I'll watch the football. Mm. Uh, sometimes even list, I prefer to listen to the football because- It keeps you, it almost a form of meditation, keeps you focused. Yeah, I mean, it's good for timekeeping because you know, you know, 45 minutes each way, half time, break, you know, put the kettle on, whatever. <laughs> 90 minutes, you want to think to yourself, what can I do with 90 minutes? You know, it helps bracket time. Um, obviously, it's hilarious listening to some scores, uh, but, but you know, even the use of music helps uh, as a you know as a calming tool, but also tracks time. Is there any particular music that you would listen to in order to? Well, uh, it's always on shuffle. Uh, thankfully, I have an iPod, uh, which I still use. Not, uh, I've, I've been people have looked at me perplexed, uh, saying, "Why do you still have an iPod? Why just use whatever?" You know. And, or YouTube or whatever, but um, or Spotify. Yeah, Spotify. But you know, I don't need to listen to every bit of music. I, you know, I have my select music, but then if I want to shuffle, yeah, and if I want to get something new, I down, I buy it, download it, put it on. But in general, um, uh, just to so you listen to Philip Glass. Uh, <laughs> give it a go. No, no, no. Give it. <laughs> but, Repetition uh, of notes. But I guess uh, one particular uh, sort of music that I mean, I don't listen to religiously nowadays but when I was at university started kicking around ideas of what it was I was about uh, you know what work I wanted to make and put out there uh, I clicked certainly with one band just to mention them the rifles yeah um, I mean I grew up you know with the influences of uh, you know mod you know, you know okay, 60s yeah. mod bands obviously I was a big Beatles head uh, and you know I, Obviously, I have to thank my uh, family for that, uh, in particular my dad, in terms of influence of music. I guess passively, because he would have it on the radio when mm -hmm. he was, was driving us around. It, I'm not saying he was always going, here, play this. That was more my brother. Um, mm -hmm. He was always feeding me sort of bands or whatever to listen to. But then when I went to university, I was sort of doing that myself. So mm -hmm. what I'm saying is that, you know, found your identity. I, I haven't done to them. But the that particular band, The Rifles, uh, mm -hmm. they came out with an album uh, which I've now adopted these days to sort of ex yeah. express the full emotion of what it is that I identify and what work I want to make and they called it The Great Escape as mentioned there um, and that was an album of you know loose 12 songs that was all about um, you know pretty much uh, your everyday scenery you know we talk about you know traveling into work you know hard situations being hard up and you know if you're skint uh, one weekend or whatever but it was this uh, that particular song was you know the title track of that album. Um, I guess we're going into BBC uh, Radio Five lounge music here, like the interview. But anyway, um, that particular title track it, it it was the idea that you're you're constantly on this search, you know, for something else. You know, when will you ever get to that point of you know satisfaction? And, and you know, like and there's a line in it waiting waiting. Uh, for the day that you're not looking for something else, you know, meaning that you're always Intent. trying to get yourself content, yeah. And I guess that was an emotion that you know I connected with, and I dare say a few others of the that, that follow that band tap into. But me in particular was that sort of content in terms of you know finding these other locations, and that's what I, I, I was naturally doing. Uh, any walk home or walk in general from the stations, or the journey in and around anyway. Finding these alternative spaces to be a bit more quiet and at, you know, at ease, and, and just to get away from uh, the noise in the crowd. Um, you mentioned um, how it kind of talks the music, sort of speaking about, um, I suppose, 
come and maybe their life, you know, details of life. Other than the rifles, would you say there's a band today that's more contemporary? I mean, what about I mean, they are, they are old. I mean, the rifles are, you would say, I mean, when I think of rifles, I think like late noughties. Oh, right. Um, so if you if we really want to get very, very con contemporary, then maybe the, the last two, three years, would something like the Sleaford mods, uh, in terms of, because I always think of the Sleaford mods as being like similar to the specials, mm -hmm. in terms of talking about, like you say, about the politics, about social life. Would you say? I mean, are you into um, the Sleaford mods? I am, uh, I, but in, I, I'd much rather read the lyrics. Uh, I think that I mean, I love the guy. He's a, um, he's a real, uh, you know, uh, proper proper front man. You know, a real uh, um, physical presence. Um, however, I'm a, I'm a guitar man, so I like the music and you can listen to a pre-recorded mix or just some dude on a stage pressing play or whatever. You'd it's rather not, read the it's not a bag, if you like. But I'm, I'm not slagging them off. I, I just I just prefer my riffs in between, so I like, I like that musical input. If he was to give you a, an extract of their, I don't know, uh, let me think, something, um, oh, it was one of those songs I always liked, uh, oh, Job Seeker, it was fantastic, obviously very different, you're, you're not looking for work, but, no, is, they, they hit it at home, yeah. If you were to give a, a piece of sheet of paper, an extract of their lyrics, their words, would it be like poetry to you? Would you ever, would you, uh, you know, no. refer to it? It'd be difficult for me. I feel like because um, it, it's not a personal thing that I've Absolutely. been afflicted with. Um, so I imagine how it is with others. But um, they really, uh, I mean, as we, we say, we could, we could, you know, when you identify with something and you find your voice, you run with it. And it could be, you know, making films, writing music, and they've clearly mastered it in, you know, in their sort of poetry and I don't want to say music, but they've ma ma mastered it in that sense. And I think they really do it well. However, uh, just coming back to what it is that I'm about, it's something that would, I guess I'd have to personally uh, have, have, have to experience, but I um, certainly love the imagery. I mean, I mean, we could talk about the imagery and you know, the lyrics of uh, Smiths, and, and mm. that's, a, that's a band that uh, I could really get into. I mean, things like uh, 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 Rain Falls Hard and a Humdrum Town, I mean, we've all, you know, those, those are like, they're like every day sometimes, and uh, you know, the, those are the, the beautiful languages that I'm, you know, I've experienced and, and dealt with in the sense that you know, on a rainy Sunday, you know, you're locked in, you don't want to go out. You can go out, but uh, <laughs> I spend it most of the time on my Magnus Grey Day. Yeah, it's, it's stuff like that. It, it's uh, you know, I, I think, but those are wordsmiths, and I, I admire uh, what they're doing in, in, in terms of their. Lyrics and obviously, uh, you know, their guitarists. Just going back to the Smiths, you can't forget John Marr riff. But what they're achieving it's in their lyrics, absolutely agree. Yeah, but where they're achieving that in their lyrics, um, that's where I, you know, if I'm going to be honest about what I'd like to achieve in my work, is that I, I can't. You, you, you want to ch achieve a language, and uh, I'm hope, uh, of course, the time will tell. Uh, people can say that for me. Okay. But let's move uh, off from the um, the disco song, the uh, music. I would I would like to ask you actually, um, in a way, I mean you are already talking about this, but it's it's nice to actually have a very formal question to give it some context. What is your work about, and is there room within the contemporary within contemporary practice? Now it's quite a hefty question in two halves. Uh, you are already talking. So that's nice, it's just it's a nice way of being able to give it a framing. What is your work about? And is there room for it within contemporary practice? Okay, um, well I've always gone with um, what my work is about. Uh, if I have to you know, do that sort of pitch, to, you know, because we've all been at a, I don't know, an event, be it a private view or some gathering, whatever, and the second they find out or you tell them that you do art, you paint. You do art, right? <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, you paint. It's a proper job. Yeah. Uh, so, so secondly, so to sort of you know respond to that, uh, you know, well, what do you do then? And I, I've sort of reduced it down to. I mean, I did have a whole long statement because that was mainly I was fresh out of uni, but nowadays, uh, just to sort of get a, a feel of what it is, uh, I use the terms uh, romantic realist. Ah. 
Whereas that's nice you mentioned that because that will be that will be um, a question that I will ask, which is quite packed. Yeah. So that's almost like the main middle part of these questions, which is kind of hefty. But it's nice you mentioned that because we will in a moment go on to that. Mm. But carry on. But uh, yeah, so I, I use that as a term uh, to introduce to uh, folks. Obviously, I'll, I'll, I'll expand on that. Of course. Um, yeah. Because it, it's it, for me a lot of the schooling that I was drawn to, the type of works that I really admired were from those uh, painters of that movement, the Romanticism movement. So, yeah, we've, we've all seen Turner's, Constables and Friedrich, uh, where we just absolutely admire the, the sheer scale uh, to begin with, and also the, 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 the light that comes from them. And sometimes the uh, uh, natural elements that they're portraying, sometimes it was the dread in the uh, seascapes of the Turner's, uh, Know, well known uh, storm, stormy nights, or whatever. Uh, but then also, you have those vast open mountainous views from Friedrich where you know you, 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 you feel like you're there and you okay. feel inspired by it all. Okay. Um, Before we go heavily into the romantic side, with your work, with your painting practice, and the subject of your work, what, what would you describe that as? What I mean, in some ways, you have touched little nuggets around mm. the moments in this conversation. What would you say, what drives your subject matter that you have to paint? And what? And with the idea of the romantic and the realism aspect, we, we will move into that. But why, what is it about? So why, yeah. Um, what drives your work and your subject? Well, just coming back to those uh, painters in particular, um, I mean, admittedly what they were going after at the time in their period, obviously seeking the sublime. Uh, that sort of uh, purposely remove themselves from the, the you know, be it the industrial sort of uh, built up city to escape all of that and uh, to find a, a, a higher meaning uh, to, to themselves in the, uh, the setting of the you know the, the, the natural uh, environment you know be it you know these uh, uh, inspiring or threatening landscapes you know the idea that um, this connection to the the, the um, universe and the natural uh, natural um, but that sort of emotion is uh, what I'm not sort of trying to channel that into work per se I, I'm more channeling into the idea that they they, they wanted to seek um, you know they, they were removing themselves what they were, what they were going after uh, so that's the, the type of ideas that I'm tapping into it, not, so I'm not seeking the sublime that sort of that, uh, so it's not the sublimeness. Of no, it's that mentality sort of of removing yourself to to be within the uh, a natural environment. And for me, uh, my work is uh, sort of examining that uh, relationship between you know the, the man-made uh, local environment, being the uh, neighbourhoods and the houses, to what's on your doorstep. So it's how 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 we negotiate you know those two landscapes. Obviously, folks have meshed it in such uh, texts like uh, the Edgelands. Um, you know, it's, it's about s finding that uh, English landscape, but where it sits within the confines of our, you know, our unnatural landscape, as it were. So, the, 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 as I say, the na neighbourhoods and suburbs. So that that that's the sort of romantic uh, sense of what I'm going after. That me me the mentality feeling, uh, but the the realistic. You know where that title comes into play is uh, is seeking it out. <laughs> Cutting into that question we're calling now. Yeah. Just to say, uh, well, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's seeking it out on a more localized level because uh, just coming back to again, Friedrich. Well, we spent some time around that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, coming back to his works, when you see these awe-inspiring landscapes, I mean they're great. Mm. Uh, thankfully, he's achieved that in the painting, and you can, of course, go out and you know book a holiday and. You know, go abroad and see these things, but they might not may not be accessible to everyone. I mean, I, I'm, I'm thankful that I've experienced something like that in, say, having a, a trip to Cumbria and seeing the Lake Districts. Um, okay, so you've been going up on holiday to Lake Districts. You've been doing some uh, wandering around, as like, you know, it's like the wanderer. But actually, I was thinking about your work, looking at your work, and 
you know, something comes to my mind that someone, another artist has said that um, you can't look out your window where you are and find something beautiful there, then that's your fault. And in a way, you are taking that baton and running with that and saying, yeah, do you know what? You know, there is something beautiful within a daily, everyday life that most, if, um, you know, I can imagine most people just miss. They might back into that corner of that painting on the car, not even notice necessarily because they're busy, the, the, the foliage and uh, the beauty of the grass and the sky, even the, the dirtiness of the floor can all have a beauty in itself. Or some of these other places that you've painted. So yeah, it's, do you see that as being, as you, you could probably mention this, but do you see that as being, this, as beauty in these spaces? Or? Yeah, it's funny you, you use that word, beauty, because uh, in one of the questions you asked earlier, who I want to be next, you know, to speak next to, mm. uh, just a quote, the great man himself, Pizarro, he said, uh, blessed are those who see beauty in the everyday. Or the oh, overlooked. Oh, wonderful. The overlooked. Uh, so oh, nice. uh, even tapping into the spirit of, uh, you know, you just said earlier um so it's not so much wander above the mists it's uh, i guess wander amongst uh, the daily life yeah because that's what uh, like i say uh, it, as mentioned earlier it's, it may not be accessible to everyone to go out and ex explore these uh, or inspiring landscapes because it might not it might not be available to them so that sort of spirit and mentality um i guess if it can be achieved uh, you know whilst walking around through, you know, if there is a woods nearby or if it's a quiet offshoot path, an overpass, anything. It's also um, not just that negotiation between uh, the natural environment and the man-made, it's also um, re-establishing a different sense of the, these places because sometimes, you know, like a cul-de-sac where it backs off mm. onto a train station or like with an overpass. See, that reminds me of a place in Gillingham. Exactly, okay. yeah. But I can imagine you see people dumping, you know, there yeah. or whatever litter. Yeah. And they obviously I get that's what they're served there, but they're not necessarily portrayed in that sense. They're more sort of reevaluating that environment to say it's not just a dumping ground. You know, these, these offer. Redefined. Yeah. I mean, they, this this should offer something else, and they shouldn't be uh, demonised in that sense. Where, you know, obviously if you saw them on a darkened night, you know, you see a mirror. But in the light of day, you know, it helps. In, in, way I, in the way I portray them anyway, to so how take that image away. How long have you been working with the subject? I mean, I would believe there's a painting up there that started about nine years ago. Yeah, uh, that one out the back. So uh, that's at the beginning of then of your... So that was, yeah. So you've had about, you're coming up for about, ten, coming up for about 10 years under your belt yeah. of, the, uh, of the subject that you've chosen. Um, well, I'd like to say that, you know, it's something, I, 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 it's, Dear to my is it heart. evolving in any way? It's slowly evolving. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to be pushing uh, the envelope to do the breaking boundaries. A lot of what I'm doing derives from my own personal emotion and what, as we talked about earlier, why I make work. It's that sort of solitary sort of practice. Uh, I find my own voice in it. Um, and the things that I want to discuss uh, is that sort of mentality and the, the state of mind seeking these uh, quiet solitary uh, environments to sort of temporarily remove myself for be it quiet reflection um, so that's you know the ambition in the works in general I, but uh, who knows in time where that, that will lead to um, obviously uh, you know having a schooling in I say schooling I, I, that's more of a, an admiration I'm not going to recite the, the, the you know the full theoretical theory that, you know, that's a double use of the word, the, uh, the context of those uh, movements is more so much the imagery that I tap into. Okay. So, but having that sort of admiration of those works and also going out in those environments, like walking around the Lake District, I've, you know, I've taken pictures like yeah. we all do when we do those journeys. And uh, I would like to quite, you know, not now, but because I'm still very much in, interested in presenting a localized version of those, uh, romantic ideas but okay. maybe in time while we're here i would like to stay on this area so i'm gonna we'll ask this question which feeds this even more what we're talking about now because there are things you're talking about as well that i like to continue with which is which i want to ask in a moment things about obviously i can't see no grief which is fine that's yeah. good um i think about your work as being a bigger context 
gives us a few pains in one of them. So there's other things that we like to bring in and also refer to your new source material that obviously it's on the back burner potentially from what I gather, maybe in the future. But before we get to that, I want to get this quite, a, because you're already talking about the romantic and realism. So let's get this question, which is quite meaty, out there on the table. Um, you can elaborate, uh, elucidate on this. And then hopefully we can spend some time around this area talking about your work and how you process it, how you make it. Yeah. Okay, bear with me uh, out there because this is quite a, a big question and I'm going to have to really look at this. I should have bought my glasses. Anyway, I would like to, here, I want to read out a couple of quotes and from out of these, hopefully interlinking questions. So, the quotes, among the narrative techniques, realism in literature is an approach that attempts to describe life without idealization or romantic subjectivity. According to, the, to, uh, according to Dictionary of Literary Terms by Coles, realism in literature is a manner and method of picturing life as it really is untouched by idealism or romanticism again. So we can say realistic aesthetic is a style of writing that gives the impression of recording or reflecting faithfully an actual way of life. Art as a visual truth procedure, as I like to think of it. Realism is a reaction to romanticism where the romantic schema is very much about escapism. So with this, that in mind, I do believe that... It sounds like they're clashing. Yes, yeah. within your statement, and I find this quite interesting and intriguing, and I really want to sort of unpack this, well, no, use yeah. unpack this. In your statement, your first opening line, or, or title, I believe, refers to, and I think you mentioned it earlier on, the romantic and realism. This is interesting because we realise these are two opposing forces within aesthetics. Mm. So, what are your thoughts on this? I guess, uh, no, no, there's a conflict in those two definitions. Uh, my purpose, I mean, I, it's never been my active purpose, but I, the work I'm presenting would be to, uh, you know, mediate in between there, you know, to, to bring, bring those sort of parties together. And, uh, but the, uh, as you say, the, the realist sort of view on it is to present uh, a reflection on you know society and, and what's going on and, and life in general. Um, I mean, I guess uh, that aspect of my work is um, you know if I'm actively sort of temporarily removing myself into these quiet landscapes to retreat to, uh, it, it, not in the sense of the romantic scheme, but in terms of retreating from their cities at the time to seek the sublime. But it's more more to do to find these quiet moments to be. You know, peaceful and away from it, because these environments are hoped to present to others. They could possibly help achieve a, a moment's peace for people to sort of um, take them away from whatever conflict or drama that's going in their lives. Uh, that might be it, and that's essentially why. You know, just to touch on the obvious, there's no people in them, because <laughs> you know I don't want a narrative. Um, as much as I've enjoyed, you know, as mentioned Pizarro, he had those people in the field and that was a reflection of that society at the time, the, the, the peasants. Uh, but um, uh, in these in particular, the absence of helps to project yourself into. So I guess that what, that's the part I'm helping, uh, or asking I should say, the viewer to complete that sort of realist or realism sort of aspect in terms of projecting themselves. So what is realism to you then? Well for me, I, I'm, I'm not going to, in terms of the artist's terms or, or the schooling, it's not so much that for me. It's the, the physical, uh, physicalness of it, like the actual. You know, it, it, that's that's what I'm presenting you with. That's what. Would you say more naturalism is suited to you? Um, it could be, but I mean, you know, but uh, I'd say that I use it in a sense to ground the uh, uh, the irony of what I'm trying to achieve in that sort of flight. Not flight of fancy. That's wrong. The what I'm trying to achieve in the uh, the ideal. I mean, that's ideal. I D Y double L, like so these idyllic uh, landscapes, you know, you know, 
far from the mountains and the mountain vistas, wide open and seascapes, whatever, um, trying to find that mentality and appreciation within your own landscape, you know, your, your neighbourhood. So th I guess that, that's, as I say, trying to mediate between those two fields and grounding it so that it can be accessible to everyone and relatable. And uh, as mentioned, I want the viewer to displace themselves into it. Is, uh, as I say, they help complete it. They also project their own uh, identities on it as well. Um, for, for some, they might see something uh, that's um, not, not necessarily agreeable with. They might see one walk, a one walkway or a footpath that might be unsettling. You know, as I say, if you go down on a dark night, it might be different, or even during the day, whatever. But um, some others might find joy in it because it's a quiet bike ride through, uh, so they're quite occupied themselves. Um, it's like a collision, isn't it? It is a strong collision, yeah. I, I mean, admittedly, I imagine there'll be folks out there saying, it, will it ever agree? But I'm not going to be... There is, I mean, there are other artists who kind of have done that. I mean, I'm thinking of someone who I thought of earlier on, actually, when I said about Find the Beauty album. Mm -hmm. And I remember their work being described um, where there's this like a collision of uh, social, social realism with the romantic and it's you know it's almost like is it is that are you creating yourself like it's something that almost like one needs the other somehow um, it's interesting isn't it almost like a paradox but i find that myself i find that really intriguing well i know um uh, obviously to mention george shaw's works taps in thoroughly into that sense of the, the nostalgia because he was painting his uh, lovingly his hometown so I can imagine where that, nowadays it gets talked about a lot, I, well, certainly not for me, but for others I guess, uh, that's social realism commentary, that's that's up for discussion. But in general, um, uh, the, you know, the, the, the obvious uh, aspects of what I'm looking at here, uh, you know, big one there, um, the, the realist part, um, I amplify it in the, uh, the man-made elements. Uh, so again, using it as, a, as an obvious term, uh, so the are you the romantic walking home on the way on the back streets of your town and you're thinking of these wonderful places which you've just been to recently you're the wanderer in the mind you want to wander in the mind yeah well, that is romantic wander trap within the can within the, the town but there's, a, there's equally a joy in, in, in finding these uh, hidden spots and these locations that are not necessarily accessible so there's joy in finding that you know independently um, Obviously, we can enjoy walking along uh, uh, fast open fields, but I, there's, there's something to be found in you know quietly navigating through. Uh, heck, you could be in your own town and not know these spaces. That's, that's what I really like. Hence, why there's you know that green sort of finger post saying the Great Escape. There's a, an ironic sense again. That's why I use that title not to, ref to reflect the band uh, whose album was talking about such things about the other day, but the idea that you're you know, I could essentially say my own paintings are, you know, um, actively serving the purpose as a finger post saying to the viewers, you know, go explore, you know, whatever. Uh, so that's what I, I enjoy personally when the viewer helps complete it uh, in terms of projecting their own ideals. But the, uh, just to, to talk and expand on how the actual paintings are made themselves. Yeah, that's um, right. The, uh, so where those two conflicting sort of you know yeah. things come into play, um, yeah, it's certainly opposing. Yin and yang. I hope to achieve that through the uh, the application of the how I paint. So um, now, admittedly, they're not uh, they're oil paintings, but they're not oil in the sense where you know slap and whatever you know palette knives. Considered, they're considered. Yeah, they're, they're, they're very well. Yeah, I guess that's comes from a the environment I've worked. You know, travel through, then obviously repeated through again by meditating on an, an image. So that's where the consideration comes across. But when I'm dwelling on an image, I get to, you know, re explore that feeling and the emotion of where I was that day. As I say, I joy in finding this lost, uh, unidentified area. So the realist aspect comes into the, uh, you know, where I found this to begin with. So it's in the local. And, confines of a, you know, uh, of a 
neighbourhoods. So they'll be reflected in, say, the lamp posts, the rooftops, the fences, and they'll be drawn very, not acutely, I don't go for photogenics, but they will be sharpened to the sense where they remind us of the humdrum and the fact that where we are. But then the, if, you know, me in particular, mind you where it comes from, drawing the, uh, and painting out the, uh, more lovingly, the overgrowth, the, the greenery and the trees. So I hope to um, engage a bit more of my, certainly my authorship in, in that. I mean, they're not too wild. I mean, they're not gonna go, you know, like, uh, you know, like extravagant uh, colors, but enough to see more of a brushstroke in them, in, in, in those sort of, you know, the tree branches, the grass, than, than say the rooftop. So that the, the romantic idea of me in, in finding, you know, joy in the na natural environment, I hope to tra translate into the brushwork of that. In some ways, I don't even really necessarily, when I look at the painting, you know, it doesn't even feel like in a true sense of naturalism. Because for me, naturalism will be almost, you know, identical to the colours and the mood of nature in itself. You know, almost like to identical to that. For me, I, I'm, magic, magic realism is going through my mind. Um, and in some ways, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big, big fan, of, as no doubt you may see on my YouTube channel. I'm also a big fan of, I'm a big fan of um, the game Skyrim. Mm. Okay. Now, the, the interesting part about this, Skyrim being a Elder Scrolls find, which I'm a big well into it, as you'll see on my YouTube channel, just so you know. Um, on the game, we have where you can mod the game. And there's a, a mod on there which is called, oh, what's it called? Um, where you change the weathers and the, and the okay. colouring. Um, oh, well, I forget which one I'm thinking of actually. So it's a world of fantasy, right? It's it not, is. Not, not like ridiculous fantasy. It's an fantasy, open world RPG. But it's, a, it's all natural. Uh, you shared pictures with me in the that's past. That's one. Yeah. And that's it. There's a mod called Mythical Ages. Now, on that, what it does, it changes the atmosphere and the colouring of the sky, etc., etc. Mood, yeah. yeah, and actually, I don't know if maybe a lot of viewers here will know about that, and maybe you may not be aware, but some of your colours in your palette does remind you of the mod in the game, Mythical Wages. Now, I have to tap into that, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I've sent some images to you, but there's a kind of, if you look at gaming well, mm. you know, they're, they're creating something like this, the magical side of romance, you know, romantic into the game. I'll have to show you at some point. And it's funny you should say about the whole, you know, modding the, you know, the skyline, as it were. Um, there, there was uh, something that I tapped into in a particular set of works that I was, uh, you know, uh, focusing at a point in my life and championed. It was the uh, such works from the allotments. Now, uh, again, the whole scenery of that is quintessentially embedded in sort of, uh, you know, what makes up the English landscape. And, but more so, um, I mean, I resonate with the, the idea of an allotment is that it's a place that you retreat to. Mm. You know, you, you come from work and you retreat to that environment and you plod around in whatever the field or the shed. So for artists like myself who uh, come to studios, wherever they be, uh, hell, this, this is considered an assemblage of two worlds. So those sheds and the landscapes that I was looking at at the time in the allotments, I was, you know, presenting lovingly and championing in a way and uh, to present that sort of, you know, different world to the outside. Because, I mean, most of when we see people's allotments, it's on the train, you know, passing or on the car, or as you're walking through one of these footpaths, you see it through the fences, whatever, and it looks like a different world. So when I was making those pictures, the skylines were purposely changed to a different hue. So in some works you may see of mine, uh, the skyline is, typically English grey weather or whatever. And that's, again, to reflect those realist every, everyday type of matter. But in those particular paintings, uh, to sort of create a, a different world and that, 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 that those uh, people find themselves when they're spending time in the allotments, uh, they're painted in like more pastel pinks and greens and blues. Um, and then they'll, they'll, they'll have like hints of other tones underneath that been built up through. Have you thought about doing using other materials as well? Maybe pastels or uh, watercolors. Have you tried? Well, actually, yeah. I mean, have you worked, have you ever worked 
worked on um, what did I work on? Have you worked on board? Yeah, and yeah. you have. Um, and yes, by working on board, have you also tried other materials like uh, charcoal or or uh, pastels and watercolour? Have you had the opportunity to explore? Uh, so yeah, like yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, most of what you've mentioned, uh, I, I tapped into. Well, at university and in general with growing up, um, certainly had my fun with most of them. But a lot of them served a purpose as a sort of um, uh, preparatory, uh, like sort of sketches, yeah, yeah. studies. Um, but I also noticed that they, in, in those studies, they weren't helping to, you know, uh, really reflect those elements that I was speaking about earlier, like making the everyday humdrum items that exist in the right landscape be it a bin or whatever, uh, a sign, you know, acutely drawn, and then with the wildness in the natural parts. So, I, um, again, to why uh, uh, you know, paint on canvas? If not, I mean, obviously, I've, I've painted on other surfaces, and they all equally have, uh, have different successes. So working on paper has been a joy in the past. Um, with, you know, with my particular oils and the way I paint, which is binned out, uh, they dry really instantly. Um, it's not like glazes, is it? No, no. One grows on top of another. You've still no. got a little body to the paint. Yeah, I mean, but, like, but you don't use any grids. You go direct. No, yeah, no. no. I go straight, you work straight. very direct. From I mean, I'll have um, a simple when I'm, when I'm, you know, starting on a canvas or board paper, you know, different surfaces. It'll just be a simple cross axis, and that's enough for me to sort of, you know, have my you know eye in it. And also, it helps. Free me up a little bit in terms of, as I say, not working religiously from a, uh, a source material. And hell, if it, if there's an error in there, I, I welcome it because, you know, I'm not a dreadful error, but enough to sort of, you know, dwell on an image and, and play around with what it could be. Uh, but yeah, I, like, I, 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 I don't pre-treat most of uh, my work in terms of, you know, I know there are artists out there and they do it to great effect. Uh, people I've worked with, people I've seen, you know, in contemporary galleries, and understand the value in that because obviously that's that helps with that title and it being a contemporary that it's a considered and fully understanding materials. And I marvel at the, the folks that that do that. Um, however, my personal feeling is it comes back to the accessibility of the, the work that I want to make and present to people. I really, as, as much as the image is supposed to be relatable to the individuals to project themselves into, so too should be the actual, um, you know, the physicality of the work. So I don't, I mean, I know they're all stores bought. I'm not, I'm not embarrassed by that fact. You know, these canvases are uh, bought from the store. And it's, <laughs> but you know, everyone does it. Um, and I quite like that, that, you know, if, if these pe people are going into the store and pick up a canvas to paint, that's great. Um, but I, what I'm doing with my works presenting these images on them, uh, I'm also asking the audience to say, well, look, this is what can be achieved. Uh, not only just finding these uh, environments, as I say, that they act as a finger post, but you can also achieve that sort of mental uh, ability to sort of go on and make your own uh, practice. And even the, the whole treatment and the, the application of the paint, I'm, I don't personally like to put an arm's distance away from the audience to say that it's, it's done at such a level that, I'm not going to say elitist, but it's borderline distancing myself from everyone else who could equally do something similar. Do you think so you're I'm trying um, to really connect and bond with them? In some ways, are you acting like a bridge, you're like a somewhere between? Yeah, definitely. You know, in a way that your work can be appreciated by those who are in the academic field. Certainly. You know, and the curators and the writers and the critics, and at the same time, the the everyday man. The everyday person can also enter into a gallery space, look at your work, and feel like and I identify with that. Space. Yes. Uh, so you're bridging the, between two worlds, and the fact that you're looking at—I know you've been reading. We won't go into it too much because, you know, time will not permit. Obviously, you've looked at um, aesthetics by written by Kant. You know, these big issues, big topics, big subjects on aesthetics and beauty and sublime, and for. Those who go to art school, we're kind of introduced to this this philosophical discourse, which is quite in depth. Yeah, they're a good break. <laughs> it, you know, it's not an easy Sunday afternoon. Really. Get through exactly, 
And I can imagine for the everyday person, they're not aware of this. We are because we go to art school. So without necessarily going too much into this, you're in a way bringing that to them through the, the work, concretizing mm. the abstract. But not going necessarily too far with it in the sense that it's a, it's, you know, introducing it, but not all of it to sort of distance myself, like to sort of flex my muscles as it were, that, that knowledge. Uh, but I mean, I'm not gonna count myself as too knowledgeable in that, but I, I took what was the necessary ingredients to be inspired by. Um, but certainly, uh, yeah, if uh, acting as a bridge, as much as I am between those two tightening of such movements, romanticism and realism, I'd like to do with my audience because if there's a, a school in practice and uh, aesthetics, um, I'd like to again localize that on such a you know presentation for everyone else to you know come in and enjoy through because most of most of the uh, you know artist works can be uh, overlooked. Uh, you know, if they, they go beyond uh, you know contextual theories, and it becomes too too much, and it's almost ignored. And that's you know, I mean, there's some people who, whose works out there are really conceptual, and I like, but then again, I know that's missed by the, you know by most uh, people who have an understanding of what art can be. It's quite democratic in the way you work. Yeah, I mean, uh, if I want to put it that way, yeah, I, I like the idea that it, it, anyone can dip into it, because even us, we, we navigate through many circles of uh, societies, that's the, one of the luxuries of bit doing what we do, we can go to one party one week, it'd be higher, and we can go down pub or in the, uh, the terraces one week, and you know, whatever, we rub shoulders with uh, everyone is what I'm getting at, but if you can do that with your work as well, I mean, I'm not asking everyone to, to, to you know, buy it all up, but if people can tap into it, then um, that's my that's my uh, that's my result. We were speaking earlier on before this um, conversation actually over a coffee. And we were talking about was it the the idea of you know where we were thinking about that art, the world of art, or the art, or the idea of art, almost in a way like philosophy, where what we're doing in a way is we they're writing within the abstract and we are almost like making something solid and physical and then oh, oh how important are we as uh, yeah, yeah and then presenting that for those on a Sunday afternoon who are out with their family wanting to mm. you know have a look at some contemporary art or take modern or something or take Britain and as artists as we were saying about I think it's that you know scientists and oh yeah, yeah. so there's other people out there that uh, we were, we were mainly t uh, touching on the, uh, the idea of like because you know, obviously the, 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 you're going to get asked like, why, why are you doing this? Why, no, who are you to be making paintings? And you know, <laughs> you know how age. important do you think you are, or whatever? Or you know, like, because you're right, it, it can't. In nowadays, you know, it could be considered as a luxury that you know you can get on a painting. But you know, what I'm using is again store bought. I'm not doing anything that's you know too expensive here. Uh, so. I think if, if anything, if it's a luxury, it's the ability to to give yourself that time to look at art and talk about art. That's a luxury, you know. That's, that's something that you should be everyone should buy into. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're coming back to the whole who are we? Are we important? We still serve a great purpose because we're reflecting, you know, a language. And be it in your work with uh, the kids you see dramas, you know, we you know we we can project ourselves into them because you've presented them in such a way. Uh, you know that are relatable. You know they're not they're not a direct narrative where it's about that individual. It's about oh I'm also that individual. This is quite interesting because you just said that and it's actually kind of made me think of something. I'm not even going to go so much into that because it's like Rob Lee did it. Too. But it's made me think about something that I'm having to process. Um, you know, like you look in the mirror and you think, right, what is it you're trying to achieve? Mm. And in a way, when I look at your work, um, for me. The idea of realism or the mimetic isn't the issue. You know, oh look, that looks like the gr all the grains in a piece of wood, or this. Or that. yeah. That's not necessarily the issue, but it's the content, the story, the narrative, or the social relations within that work. But when I look at your paintings, I feel that's where you're at as well. It's, and you just mentioned the artist Joel Shaw, which I think it's going to always be one of those artists who's going to be someone that will ever say, oh, Joel Shaw, which. In a way, I wasn't really going to go into that. No, but he's doing wonders for what we're 
No, well, I'm interested in it. I used to have it 20 yeah. years now. But no. Where was it? Yes. There's a t- you know, there, I remember one song, I think it was on his MA, and he was being interviewed part of the Royal College um, history of the Royal College, and there was a TV documentary. And you see him in his studio, I was in the second year of his MA, and he's, you know, he's got like 16 paintings on the go. Mm. So I always liked that because, why well, I liked it was because it felt like I'm not just making one no, best yeah. hit, yeah. but it's about a greater context, a bigger subject, something very urgent for him and you could see there was an urgency of getting something down so apply that to your work i feel that you're doing very similar thing that you're excuse me it's not um, about one particular best hit but actually it's like an album it's about all the songs it's about yeah that's a, a really yeah that's quite a nice way to put it um, and that's how i feel with your work do you do you, that's something that yes yeah, yeah, you yeah. run with i mean uh, if i'm my uh uh, adopt that term, but certainly uh, creating That's an album fun, because yeah. heck, if I had my way and if I was uh, gifted enough to, I'd, I'd, write, right. I'd, I would write music mm-hmm. instead of painting, no. but my own language happens to come through that solitary process of being alone and drawing and then eventually picking up a paintbrush and then finding this ability. But um, yeah, uh, working on multiples. Uh, yeah, it helps sort of branch out. Uh, so it's a subject, isn't it? It's, it's always a subject. So, I mean, my titling is is mentioned in, uh, not as a reflection of that band that we spoke of earlier, but it's also in an ironic sense. You know, it, it helps sum up also that other titling of being a romantic realist, that finding the great escape is ironically mentioned to say, well, where, where can you find it? Ah, oh, uh, so it goes back to the album as well. It back to that. Yeah. And, um, mm. Uh, coming back to working on multiples, uh, so all the work that I examine, I mean, currently at the moment, uh, most of what I'm producing are footpaths, bridges, uh, walkways, underpasses. Allotments. Yeah, that's, so that's an ad- adjacent uh, Have series you done of that work. Recently in the I, I haven't done that for a yeah. while, but that was uh, two years, two and a half years ago, or three years. But even so, the allotments, the, the footpaths, they're all different parts that make up these. Uh, again, idyllic uh, environments within the everyday confines of your modern landscape, be it your neighbourhoods, you know, to, in, to, to achieve what is the uh, the idea of a great escape, that, that yeah, feeling, you see, that you mentality. Keep, you've mentioned the great escape a few times, actually, and if we were doing analytical in terms of English literature or something, we'd be over, we'd be circling that term often, you know, yeah. the great escape. That would be one of those, how many times you've said that, and, and for me, your subject, when I listening to you for me the subject is like you are looking to escape something almost be somewhere else mm, yeah. where you can gather some time for your mind a space for your mind you make a great hippie <laughs> <laughs> no i should i should be one of those people you know like uh like one of those uh you know those, those makeshift dens uh but like, as i say i i, I was i admired those who make their makeshift uh uh, hum, you know, ramshackle sheds in the allotments. Um, because at one point, when I was in a, a particular studio, it was all just pieced together through uh, assemblage of boards and whatever. Because it was, uh, this was uh, actually Lewis Jamal House because they uh, inherited the, the old Deptic Library. But what they did uh, brilliantly inside, they used that empty space and created uh, just their own self made studios. And again, that was at the time in my, uh, my life when I was tapping into the allotments because it was that sort of you know that environment that we create for ourselves but um obviously I, that was long contributed by those open members i didn't i joined quite late um i'd love to have helped build but not to be um because i wasn't there long enough but um but the, the i coming back to the title um i look at many different examples uh and uh, and like to create if i can over time series of works uh, of yeah different examples that address that and where they can be found uh you know and they're everywhere they're, they're jotted across uh, the edge of the, the english landscape and it's I'm, 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 I'm and the reason for what i do why i do is uh it's, it's where i find myself physically and i'm, I'm there i'm living that in, in that environment so the old expression do what you know or write what you know i'm painting what i know um, Absolutely. So ultimately, what it comes down to, in terms of 
uh, me as a practitioner, uh, I, I'm creating the poetics of it in, inside a landscape, romanticizing it, but grounding it, uh, in it to you know reflect the sort of accessibility of it all, but off, ultimately offering up um, solely uh, an image to the audience for them to themselves complete that sort of uh, objective by projecting themselves into it. And it's, so it's for them. Once I'm finished with the picture, it's theirs. You know, it no longer belongs to me. Oh, well, there you go. It's out in the world. Yeah. Representing yourself. Mm. Actually, you're talking about poetics. It's making me think of some literature. Uh, a book called Poetics: The Poetics of Space, huh. um, which is beautiful. With this idea of where we create our first memories. Mm. Um, but yeah, uh, gosh, there was something that went through my mind. I'm just going to lead us further. Okay. Well, oh, so I was just going to reflect on what you said. Like, uh, that I'm that the idea that these places are elsewhere. Like where I'm actively removing myself and retreating to and escaping, um, I guess that that um, they could be that could be for numerous reasons. Um, I mean, there's, there's loads of examples that float in my mind at the moment. But one person um, expressed to me, cause as, as they do when, you, when they find out what you do as a uh, you know from your pastime, um, oh, you can paint, yeah. Well, you should do this, and they they uh, they offered up. Uh, a story about how uh, she used to retreat to her parked car outside the, not on her driveway, but down the road from where she lived. Uh, and it was quite, it was obviously a sad story, but she retreated to this car to sort of get out of the house momentarily from her, you know, from the household, whatever was going on at the time. But she said being in that space helped sort of reflect and dwell and, and you know, distill herself. And, you know, th th those are the things that, you know, I want to tap into because we all experience these landscapes. so. But they could be course, for different yeah. reasons, not necessarily as you know, unfortunate as that sad story. But sometimes, it could, as for me personally, you know, uh, sometimes there's been moments where I just want to get off the street because you know, I have people in the way, oh, I just want to get from A to B quick. <laughs> yeah. But then, when you realize when you go from A to uh, I don't know, C, D, E, F, and then to B, um, you, you've know, explored yeah. this wonderful. Uh, um, unidentified landscape that you'd never really have uh, appreciated before from going from A to B. How I can identify you in some ways with you with that is that back in the 90s when I lived in Broadstairs in Kent, um, I used to love going sitting down the, on the pier looking out on the, from the, onto the sea. And you know why you, with your interest in, um, um, oh God, uh, the name now has gone out of my head now, the German romantic. Um, Hasbro. Exactly. With the with one yeah. some of your photographs with Casper David Friedrich, not Casper from Kez, although he was a <laughs> spirit. You overlooking <laughs> you have some pictures of you overlooking mountains with the fog. Now for me, you say I see you, that's your kind of escape looking out over the mountains. I for me it would be mud by the sea. Yeah. So that that I take own oh, Mod by the sea. Yeah, yeah. mod by the sea, yeah. Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy. Uh Whitney Parker. But yeah, I, I, I had that, that desire to. So even that you're tapping into that, you know, that, that you, you're just sitting on a bench. I mean, obviously at the time you you're going through your whole mind or whatever, but you, that's what I quite like about the way I find these works. I'm not necessarily realizing what I'm doing at the time by taking these works and finding these, uh, these environments. You know, that's where the organic process comes across. Until realizing, oh, shit, um, I had a really like pleasant time doing that. What you just described, like being on that bench, taking that time out, and you know, I know it's just a simple bench, but it's offered up a whole, you know, environment for you to sort of process anything you wanted to. So, do you think you, in these spaces, is it like switching off your computer Definitely. and reconfiguring, getting rid of the cache, and yeah. you're clearing your data and you're, you're reconfiguring well, the mind? Um, so, I, I, a bit, a bit leave, like everyone else. I'm, you know, I use my phone. I'm on it. And, <laughs> you know, but it, you know, in this day and age, it, it's healthy just to switch off. Um, I guess, you know, that's why I do these country walks now and again, or, or holiday trips, it's just switch off and tune out. Um, I isolate myself or get lost, be in an unknown environment, and it's it's healthy because it's, I'm not saying it's a test of character, but it helps you to, you know, to, to you know, tap into. Uh, a whole new thing that not, not necessarily you're available to do every day. So, when I'm, you know, drummed in by, uh, you know, my office work, um, I, I repeat that mentality process of 
going out and exploring the internet space by making such patents and offering them out to folks. Okay. Um, it's been interesting listening to a lot of the stuff, the way you paint, how you paint. Is there anything you would like to add to this? I mean, please do. I mean, obviously you have your palette of colour here. And is there anything? I mean, I'm going to ask you some a couple of other questions. Yeah, sure. Which are kind of slightly generic. That's why I was hoping if there's anything else you want to What's add, please do. Yeah, what's your, what food do you enjoy? <laughs> ah, pie and mash. Pie and mash, yeah, definitely, easily. Yeah. Can't go wrong with it. Nice. Two pie, two mash. Absolutely. Gosh, <laughs> I add that all the time. I think I'd do quite a few pounds. Yeah, but you'd be happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's... Um, okay, but in a way, it still extends from the way you make, but now presenting the work. What is the best way to exhibit art and painting, and in your case? Okay, um, I'd like to think I've um, executed with a bit of a, you know, like I, I precisely did it, but um, I'd like to think uh, I gave it examples of that in my previous uh, hosted group exhibitions. I've yet to do a solo, but then again, I've always liked the idea of doing groups because. Um, and then when I say groups, they're, they're all last set, uh, they consist of a four. Um, mainly because it, it doesn't dilute the content of the show, it gives equal participant uh, good exposure, so there's no bombarding of the images, it, uh, so it's got equal space. Um, so yeah, I, in, in, just to talk about those shows, and hopefully in the other shows that I want to do, I like to display works with, um, I guess, uh, active space around it so I, I like the idea if I ever could get a, an impressive uh, gallery with a vast space I, I really love the idea that there's just this tiny picture occupying a great grand wall what would host you know so many works or even heck one large work I love the idea that someone's painting that's uh, say the size of A4 paper um, had, demands that presence and it, it, it's also a reflection of that environment, you know, and, it's, and also, you know, it speaks volumes when you see it singled out there. And it, it commands the audience to walk over, you know, across the gallery uh, floor and, and look, have a one-on-one -on -one viewing. And coming back to the process and the works I like to make, um, obviously, just to mention, I mean, where I am at the moment is one reason why they're that size, you know, roughly 39 by... 29 by 39 usually um, it's because I'm having to work here and, 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 and you can clearly see my service yeah, transport as well but another reason yeah. for it being is you know to go beyond that scale you know, you know it, you, you might not as well for me personally and the subject matter I, I want to address I don't think they're achieved on a grand scale because they require one-on-one -on -one, uh, viewings that intimacy so having that size small has uh, achieved that, and because if they were across the room, you would go, "Well, there it is. Why bother?" You know. Uh, with you, how would you like to not only show alongside painting, but how would, would you like to show alongside maybe different kinds of art forms like sculpture or video? How would your painting sit next to someone who had a video work or a photograph? Would that um, again, uh, as long as equal parties have know adequate spacing so you're not looking through someone's uh, sculpture to see mine or equally backing into my painting you know or backing into their work I should say uh, to look at mine so uh, that's all down to the curator um, um, if you were to create your own show would there be anything slightly you know, obviously there's a standard way of presenting work mm. would you ever obviously the the subject in itself is kind of you know it's it needs to be I mean, there's obviously these important other gaps in between, so we have the chance to take on board what we've just seen. But would there be any sort of ways you think, oh, no, I'd like to play, place this slightly different, do something slightly different within the space? Have you thought about diptych, triptych, and um, even doing a mural? I mean, I'm possibly a mural. Throwing it in here. Pretty good. <laughs> um, but again, that comes back to the question of scale and how I feel personally from my use it, it's, it doesn't achieve the same effect what's you know I like the idea that if it's a small picture but it's offering this grand you know much something much more grander and it does and, and, and it, because it's trying to offer that it doesn't already need to be it's almost redundant to make it big and also that's that's what that's what the romantics 
uh, specifically set out to do to make these grand scale paintings, even though some of them uh, did achieve uh, on a smaller level, but scale plays a, a big importance there. But I'm not trying to do that, I'm trying to localize it, and that, hence the reason for um, the sizes of the canvas. But in terms of presentation, um, ideally, if, the, if there's no disturbances, you know, along, uh, you know, alongside it on the wall or even in the gallery space, it's something that I personally like to go to, you know, with any show that I do next, because, as I say, it gives not just uh, equal uh, presence of, you know, other exhibiting uh, uh, artists, but it's the respect of the actual work. It, for me, a picture should demand your full attention. You know, you should have that moment with it. And of course, if there's a picture immediately next to it, then you're going to be, you know, glancing and comparing. And also, you shouldn't be comparing. That's ridiculous. But um, that's why I've demonstrated that in those previous uh, exhibitions of mine. There's a, I remember a um, previous conversation with you, you said there was a painting in, um, I think it was the National Gallery, which is a David Hester Friedrich painting. Oh, yeah, yeah. You always, and that's quite small in scale. Mm. I mean, I've never thought of it as a sublime or something, but there is that kind of, there is, yeah. unless you want to think of religion as the element of sublime, because there is a cross, isn't there? Yeah, the Gothic cathedral that's illuminated right. in the uh, It's quite distance. dark as well, isn't it? It's quite, yeah, so that's, again, that sort of spirit that they were really trying to channel. And uh, But, I mean, we've all grown up with that image. We've seen it in textbooks, but when you actually see it, you're quite taken by, um, first of all, the execution of it all, because it's his work. Uh, but for me, double, um, uh, realising how small it was. So if you do go to the National Gallery, make a point to see it. Um, because it should be in your arsenal in terms of uh, painters that you should admire. Again, there's other artists that work quite small, like Vermeer or Hannah Shelley. Well, mm, but Vermeer's managed to do it in a very, a very small amount. Yeah, of I mean, I can see where that's, yeah, certainly where Slightly you. Slightly different to where you, I suppose. Well, I can see where, why, why you would tap into that because, you know, it's, it's how you portray these figures in a loving light, um, in an equal loving light, not looking down or looking up, but. On a level plane, and of course those uh, maids pouring out milk over the whatever the counter, you know, they're you know it's not caught their attention or their gaze; it's caught their moment of, the, of them doing something. Uh, so I can see why that's in your language to uh, appreciate. I mean, of course I do as well, but I don't. It's not in my mind when I'm making works. In fact, no one's work is in my mind when I want that's to make a work. Enough. That's fine. I can because, imagine. As I mentioned. What's in my mind is the landscape, being yeah. in that landscape, being present in that time and that uh, mentality. Okay, we've spoke about a lot about painting in its positive sense. What about painting? Is there, you know, um, are there any, what's the limits of painting? We can, it's fine. Um, Another 10 minutes we'll do. Uh, the limits? Yeah, the limits of painting. Um, good question. Again, uh, uh, as we were joking about earlier, how, how important are we and what you know <laughs> what we do? Um, there's a good chance that we could I could make all this body of work and as as someone else could, and um, it get you know if it does make a gallery brilliant. But still, if it even makes a gallery, it doesn't necessarily bank everyone coming in and seeing it. You know, obviously if they're invited, they come along and see it. But um, yeah, the, uh, so so what's the <laughs> no, that's cool. Um, I was thinking, is um, actually let me combine a few because there is oh, actually sorry, a the, uh, white paint, you know, yeah. Uh, I've got a couple of questions, so it's in a way I'm, gonna, I'm go, yeah, I'm going to collide some of the word collision. I will collide a couple of questions because obviously we can do another 10 minutes, it's getting quite late, and I imagine you guys out there may want a cup of tea. Um, obviously, the, okay, the bear with me. What are the limits of painting? And yeah, is okay. Is painting appreciated enough today? And in a way, what can it really offer today in contemporary practice? I mean, we have mobile phones. I mean, the recent Turner Prize winner in two thousand eighteen. I forget her name. Um, she used a, a mobile phone to do a straightforward recording of oh, yeah, daily life, yeah. and yeah. it was nice. I thought. I don't know again, to recite now. Uh, no, no, very poetically done, but again, we have obviously new media, we have camera phones, uh, you know, ways of extracting life 
and then mm. representing that in some um, interesting manner. So it kind of you know makes one wonder where is painting going today? Is it relevant today? And what are the limits of painting? And where would should the Turner Prize do more in terms of presenting painters, or are they just leaving that for the John Morse to 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 do? There's a few things that yeah, have to, you know, I might well ask you to just prompt a reminder on several of them, but cool. uh, just uh, reapproaching the whole limitations of painting. Um, obviously, it's an object that's going to sit on a wall and requires you to go to a gallery. Well, there's um, artists that they go beyond the wall, and there's almost like a site-specific installation mm. objects of painted objects. Um, so yeah, I I say it's, it all depends on. Again, I'm going to come back to me uh, on what it is that you want to say. So personally, uh, you know, in terms of what you want to say, it, it all determines the medium as well. If you want to talk about something that's uh, you know, like addressing uh, certain issues that you want to get home, be it whatever that's currently going on in, in this world, um, there are artists out there who use the physical object to help address it. So by if it's not in a gallery, they displace it outside. I mean, to quote one, I mean, I'm not a massive fan, but we know he's a successful in driving home, uh, and for satirical purposes, the likes of Fancy, mm -hmm. addressing certain issues. It's just a loose example uh, to quote there, but um, but that's in terms of, you know, how, how, I mean, I know he's done murals, as you mentioned about doing a mural. Uh, he's, he's, sprayed on walls, but he's also equally made installations, physical works, how he's made a whole amusement park. But they, all different mediums have their own, uh, uh, you know, ways of achieving that successful, uh, that message successfully. Um, for me personally, if it's a real strong message, maybe, I don't know, some paintings work. Uh, I'm not necessarily doing it. I know some are trying to achieve it. It may not necessarily be that. It might need something more hard hitting. But what I will say for painting in general, even if they are painting something very political, out of all the mediums that you know that we have on our plate these days, new media, uh, the digital, you know, whatever, um, painting will always command that presence to be to be viewed. It can, so it, you still have to make that journey to the gallery, go inside that space, and have a one-on-one -on -one experience, and it will still leave a mark as much stronger as any others. Painting is it's a slow process. It yeah, slows it, things down. Yeah, it requires you to meditate. Yeah, and dwell on it. Unlike photography, which is no, a it's a it's a snap instant record of what it is, and uh, usually those, you know, in photography they're on a mass scale, you know. But okay, um, but again, uh, painting is it survives, you know. Uh, ages. Do you think the Turner Prize should maybe? Well, Maybe show more painters, or do you think they're doing a, a good job as it is at the moment? And John Moore should, you know. Well, things like the Turner Prize, um, they're going to change with the times, unfortunately. It, it, I mean, obviously, they're going to reflect it, numerous things, uh, not just you know mediums that exist in the art industry. It's, it's, it might uh, reflect the uh, the artist's voice, you know, who's who, who's current at the time. Not not the populist view. I meant like. Who's voicing the concerns or whatever, or, or so it, I don't know. It's, it's that's, that's a difficult one to determine because that comes from uh, a whole inside world that I'm, you know, not partial to. But um, they, it's the, the exercise of that is to demonstrate such things. So that's where that, that committee come about, making those select decisions. It, it, uh, so they're really deciding it. What about John Morse? Do you think maybe John Morse should actually similar kind of similar question, but do you think John Morse does enough on representational painting? Certainly, yeah, they've they've um, something I really want to put a name to. I've never I've never applied, but I can imagine you will be applying very well, soon. We'll do, yeah, we'll give it a go. October, I believe. Um, with any sort of uh, um, application or, or you know thing that you can submit your work to, you should. You know, you'd be mad not to, but. Yeah, John Moores is certainly one to look up to as a, you know, uh, as a benchmark to say that they're really backing and, and, and enforcing the role of painting nowadays to say that it's, it, it has a presence, it definitely has a presence. 
and not only does it as a president, it's saying all the things at once and commanding you to look at them. Um, so yeah, that, that's doing wonders. As I say, if I can be a part of that one day, and no, why not? I don't see why you can't. In the meantime, I'll, I'll put to. my name to everything else. And uh, well, there's many things. We, I mean, I've applied for general many times. I've been that one once, and you know, it, it's just you have to keep applying. There's different people on the panel. Different yeah, even if you've been in it once, you should still keep going. Oh, of course. Yeah, because you can't just, you know, rest on your laurels and go next. <laughs> what's the next competition? I'm not saying you, know, you should apply to it year in year out. Yeah. I know these things cost, but you know. It's yeah. worth every penny. Yeah, it does, doesn't um, it? But yeah, um, but uh, even though patent has its now again its limitations of competing with this modern modern digital world that we're living in, it's we, we know it survived against other mediums in the past. You know, it's, oh, it's been around since. Yeah, people were come living in caves. So it survived the likes of sculpture, print, photography, you know, installations, or whatever, whatever you want to call art these days. It's totally acceptable. Painting has always survived it, and and you know all, all the, the heroes that I've looked at and, and people that have inspired me, you know they're doing it as well. So I'm going to stick with the winner. That's painting. Okay, um, I will have one more question. I will ask, but I will at this point say it's definite pleasure to be able to sit here listening to Rob Reed talk about um, his painting practice. How he thinks about what he thinks about painting and its relevance for today. I mean, gosh, we are in some times at the moment, and it's lovely to be able to escape that. And I don't know how many of you stayed up late last night watching Parliament and a prorogation. Uh, that's got in my head now. Pro. Oh. Um, the prorog. Oh, prorogation. Yes. <laughs> if, if, you, if you just like mumble it into one word, you can get away with it. Usually with my accent, and also just to address the audience. Yeah, it's an Essex accent. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it's something I can't forgive in in myself. But you know, I hope hopefully you've understood most of what I've said. Well, I yeah. have no doubt. Everyone else else has. Uh, again, it's uh, lovely to be here to escape all that closure of Parliament and the uh, you know all of that. So actually, while I'm here, before I ask Rob uh, a final question, which is a, basically a question of, of advice, really, for everyone else out there, or anyone. Um, I will hopefully add at the bottom of onto, on my YouTube channel information about uh, coming soon, the next artist that I'll be looking to um, have a conversation with in their studio, etc. I'm getting on to that, so I'm sorting that one out. So please watch the space and Hopefully you'll get to see who the next artist will be. Okay, and it's lovely to be able to do this. It's a thorough enjoyment. I'm learning loads from this, and as an artist myself, as a painter, for me it's really important to have this big conversation about painting. And it's nice to get out of my own studio space and to hear other people talk about their work. Anyway, one more question, and then we call it an end for this uh, episode, which is episode one. The Great Escape. Okay. So the last question is, do you have any advice for any build budding artists out there? Uh, yeah, do it. Just get on and do it. Um, don't put any hurdles in your way, because that's, uh, that's pointless. Don't um, consider any other sort of outside influences or whatever. Don't, don't, don't doubt um, what it is that you're, you, know, you want to talk about and present. Just do it. Um, there, there's an audience out there. Never mind, you know, rejection. You'll you'll get rejected. But remember, there's leagues and leagues of people out there that will appreciate it as much as there are leagues of people that won't like it. But you know, screw all those people. Yours, you're about this whole profession is solely about you. So why give a damn about anyone else? You know. But ultimately, if there's an idea in your mind uh, about work. Uh, that you want to create, be it you know, in a book, film, music, song, poem, painting, just do it. Um, <laughs> you know, it's a quote, that sounds like Mike, but get on with it and uh, just man. don't hold it, hold, hold back on anything. Just, you know, don't worry about it. it, it you've got all the time to, you know, look back on it if you wanted to, but continue on the next and enjoy the next uh, project that you work on. Nice one, brilliant. Um, that's brilliant. Okay, well, excellent. 
been a really good yeah. afternoon and I'm absolutely wicked and I've thoroughly enjoyed the conversation. Oh, cheers man, thanks for considering me in the talks and mixing. Yeah, cheers.